Mike, thanks for inviting us here today. Uh, now, I'd never really assume um, using bison chucks in an hostile environment such as this. Can you firstly just explain the application? Yes, well, when we started off, they wanted to use it where by putting this machine, wanted to hold these components. But because they were flat critical, the application was they had to sit not on the steps. And that's why we brought these jaw segments in. So we took a conventional chuck, developed it, changed it around, put these jaw segments in so the component can sit on there because the flatness is critical. They then use the jaws to open up and clamp on the inside. Now, this application, that's the diamond grinding, isn't it? Yes. Now, the actual table is revolving and the wheel is coming across in the x-axis. Yes, that's right. Now, what are the general tolerances that, you know, repeatability that you can guarantee with this? On this uh, application, they're looking around 10 microns at least. Less than 10 microns? Less than 10 microns. That was what they wanted and that's what they've got. So, with the app application, it's not standard. Obviously, you used a standard chuck, but it's a bespoke setup. Can you talk us through this and why you've had to rise this up, please? Because of where the wheel is and because they wanted to get the stroke on the machine, what we did, we made a riser block to bring the chuck up to the correct height, then with the adapter plate as well. But instead of them using the uh, conventional jaws to sit the component on, we made these jaw segments to go in between and that they can finish grind when needed to suit the component. When it's introduced, it sits, and then they're confident they've got the correct flatness. So effectively, the segments have been bolted onto the truck yep. face, um, and then they've been ground in situ on the machine, which in turn is giving perfect parallelism to the, to the rings. Yes, when they put the uh, segments on to start with, then they finish grind them to suit the component, then the component is introduced, sits flush, then it clamps on the inside and they finish machining. Now, we're going to talk to Martin later in regards to the accuracy that they've had to achieve and the, the, the process development to manufacture these ceramic rings. But another consideration was the actual hostile environment in which the chucks are working in. How have the bison chucks handled this? They've been perfect for them easily because they took two two 160 millimeter chucks two 315 millimeter chucks and two 125 millimeter chucks they've been using them now for about six months they've had no problems whatsoever so this isn't the only application that you are working on here at morgan ceramic materials no, they've got the other one on this machine next to us as well that's using the bigger chuck and on all applications, are there kind of similar processes? Yes, everything is the same for each of the three sizes of chucks. They all have jaw segments, they all have jaw riser blocks as well. Everything and is the same. In regards to grinding applications, are you guys at Bison familiar with this? Is, one of, is this one of your first bespoke applications such as this? This is the first application we're involved in when it grinds, uh, um, grinding is used with our chucks. Right, thank you. No problem, thank you.